on the line, Cliff Evans from Tank. Cliff, thanks for joining me. It's a real pleasure. It's a real privilege to, to, to be coming down to Australia. So it's a pretty exciting time for us. Let's talk a bit of ancient history, if you like, back when, uh, back when we were much younger men. Before you joined Tank, what was your awareness of the band? Well, I was always a fan of, of Tanks. I, I knew the guys um, when they sort of first started. I used to work in a, a guitar store um, when, when, when I was young. So uh, Algy and, and the Brabs brothers used to come in, and I, I sold Algy um, one of his Thunderbird basses. Um, and I would, I would always get um, like on the guest list to go see them at the Marquee and places like that in Hampstead Odeon. So I was, I was very, I was aware of the band, and we, we were good friends. So I said I, I was a fan you know, before I joined. Uh, and lo- love their music, so it kind of started there, really. Excellent. Now I've spoken to um, like some of the guys from Raven and Venom Inc over the time, and because they started off up north, and they were talking about the scene up there. What was it like in London at the time in the early eighties? Must have been a fascinating time. Yeah, it, it was. I mean, right from, from you know late seventies, early eighties. I mean, I used to I used to go and see absolutely every everything then, and I I'd lived. Um, so I lived pretty much in central London, and there were just so many pubs and, and clubs, and obviously all the bigger venues. There were just bands everywhere. There, there was a, a pub just around the corner from where I lived. It was called the Brecknock, um, and now it's like seven nights a week you could go there and, and see, you know, good metal rock bands or blues bands. Um, and, and regularly, at least every couple of weeks, you get Iron Maiden will be playing there um, when they're originally a four-piece with, with Diano, um, you know, Steve Harris, Dave Murray. Um, whoever the drummer would have been at that particular time. But they'll be playing you know, a couple of times, maybe every couple of weeks, then you get Angel Witch will be on there, you get Samson, um, just all those bands will be playing there. And you get, you know, it's only a small pub, so you get like 20, 30 people. So, so that's pretty, pretty wild. Um, and uh, the other band, uh, a band called Urchin, used to play there as well, and that was who, um, um, Adrian Smith, that was his band before he joined Iron Maiden, so... They obviously, you know, they 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 took him from there. Um, but then you you said you'd have a lot of these 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 little clubs and pubs everywhere. Uh, okay, yeah, I mean, Ham- Hampstead Odeon was a you know big venue, and you go there sort of you know, you know two or three times a week, and you'd, you'd see like Rush and the Scorpions and and, and the bands like that in one week, uh, <laughs> and your Rye Heap and stuff, um, which was really cool. So. So it was it was a very exciting time around around that sort of early eighties there. Um, still, you know, still a punk scene going on as well, and a lot of different musical styles were sort of coming out then. So it's good times. Now you joined the band. Uh, how was that early on? Well, that was. Um, I, I remember when um, uh, the Brabs brothers um, uh, left the band. I remember that that happening. Um, and I, I was in a, a, a different band at that, that time. I was playing with an old, it was a blues band called Stan Webb's Chicken Shack, um, which is quite, a, it's quite a legendary blues band from the 60s, 70s. Um, it's still going now. But um, Bob Daisley was in there, wasn't he? That's correct, yes. Yeah, Bob, Bob Daisley was on bass at one point. Christine McVie from Fleetwood Mac was in the band. Um, Paul Raymond from UFO, he was in it as well. Um, so I was I was doing a I was I was in that for about a year and one day I was uh, we were playing a show in London and um, Algy, Mick Tucker um, came they were in the audience uh, and they were with Yannick Gers who at the time I think was with Gillen um, and they were in the audience I thought oh, I've come down there and we, we were playing you know I did the show and after the show we had a few beers and they said now you've joined the band after um, Algy and um... Mick have uh, rocked up at a show. That, that, that's right. Yes, it was that that chicken show, that chicken chat club show that I was, I was doing. Said so after the, after I'd finished that show, when I've had a few beers with them, and um, and uh, they said because cause Pete, Pete Brabs had gone and Mark Brabs, they said um, do, do you want to join Tank? So I mean there was no audition or anything. Um, <laughs> I think it was just like a quite a few beers and the, and the deal was done. And you know literally the next day we were in the studio recording um, Honor and Blood. Um, and, and that's it, and I'm, I'm still here now. What's the main memories of those days? I, I think, um, I, I mean, I, when we go, go in to record on in Blood, soon after that, we we, um, we got offered the Metallica Ride the Lightning tour, um, which was a pretty big thing. I'd never really done a proper full-on t- tour before, so it was like six, re- six weeks um, all over Europe um, supporting Metallica, who were just getting really big right then. 
Um, so that was really cool to, to, to get out on tour on, on that sort of level, on a higher level there, and play to some you know, pretty big shows to a lot of people. And uh, you know, Metallica, they asked for us to be on the tour because they were, they were Tank fans. Um, so that that was a really cool thing. That that's a real highlight of, of, of our whole careers, I guess. Um, but yeah, good times. I mean, just to be able, you know, when you're sort of young, to get out and hit hit the road in a tour bus and play your guitar every night and have a few beers. So that that was uh, that's a, that's a real highlight. How different is it to going out on the road these days? I mean, we're older. Supposedly, we're wiser. Does it feel different? Um, I mean, I, I still I, I still enjoy it. I mean, it's. Um, it's difficult when, when, when you've got, you know, you've got guys, you've got to sort of try and, try and make a bit of a living out of it. Um, your budgets have sort of come down a bit. You've got to, got to try and cut, cut costs here and there. Um, so it, it is difficult, but we still, once we're out there, all the problems or whatever, as soon as we get on stage, we do really enjoy it. We have a good time, then a few beers afterwards. So it's still great hanging out with your mates and, and playing guitar. So it kind of, kind of takes you back a bit, which is you know, still very enjoyable. That's so why we still do it, really. Um, and we'll, we'll continue doing it. Between the years, we're still 18, mate. Exactly. That's the way you feel. Like when you're out there, still feel like a kid. That's it. <laughs> What's the funniest thing that's happened on tour? Too, too many things to... I mean, every every day when you've got these guys to get together, it's, it's all just a laugh all the time. Um, you know, even just, just, just travelling. I mean, I'm sure we're you know, flying to Australia now, there's a few things going to happen. And we just have a good time. We always have a few beers, and it's just a laugh. It's like kids on a school trip really that's the way we look at it so we've got a unique situation here we've got uh, a new wave of british heavy metal tour booked here for australia we've got girl school we've got venom inc and we've got raven in the lineup it's getting closer and closer all looking good then we hear there's a problem venom inc are off and in off the interchange bench is tank how did this come about um well i, I was i was in touch with um uh, doug at hardline media um who's putting on this whole tour um, and we spoke a while ago about the possibility of bringing Tank down there. Um, we thought maybe in, in future, maybe, maybe there's something that, that can be done. Um, so we kind of left it at that. But then I, um, I got a message from Doug. He said um, um, there was a problem with Venom Inc. I think one of the guys had a, 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 was ill or something, and they've had to pull out. So Doug got on to me and said, can, can you guys do it? Um, so I had to get in touch with... Um, with the other guys from the band, because some of those were pretty busy, so we shifted schedules around a bit, and then we said, "Yeah, okay, we're in. We've got to do it." So, um, so, so it kind of went from there, really. So then we were confirmed, and uh, that's it. So it was a nice surprise. It is a nice surprise. How busy is the band these days? Um, I mean, you can never be busy enough, really. I mean, we've got. Um, I mean, now we just we just did this album there, and we've we've had. Um, that, that there's some other dates have been in for a while but now this is coming just before uh, we go to uh, july uh, sorry, so we go to japan in july um for three shows so it's the first time we go back there for like 20 years um so that's going to be cool and then after that we do south america so that's the full latin america tour um and then we're looking at europe um at some point um uh, in late autumn so we're really just trying to keep as busy as possible. It's, it's very difficult trying to keep a band on the road these days um, with costs and everything, and we all have to, you know, we've got to make some money out of it just to keep things going and pay the bills. Um, but it's, it's kind of looking good at the, at the moment. I mean, these, these are good shows. I mean, having Australia come in now is fantastic. Um, so, so there's three good territories, you know, Australia, Japan, and South America. Um, so, you know, we're just expanding the fan base, and, and coming to Australia is great, obviously. So because we've never been there before, so to, you know, to play our music for, for the fan base we have there is, is, is going to be great for us and hopefully them as well. It'll be great to have you down here. You're not coming to Adelaide, unfortunately, but... Uh, <laughs> That's a shame, isn't it? Maybe next time. Maybe next time indeed, right. All right, Cliff Evans from Tank, absolutely great talking to you. Thanks so much for taking my call and wish you all the best for the upcoming new wave of British heavy metal tour of Australia with Girl School and Raven. Thanks for taking the time and have a great day. Great. Thanks very much for, for inviting us onto, onto your radio show there. I mean, it's, it's a real privilege for us to be coming all the way to the other side of the world. Um, we know we've got a good, good fan base building down there, so to be able to come down here and play our, uh, our, our style of metal um, for the fans is, is, like a, is something very special for us. Um, and we, we can't wait to get down there and have a few beers with you.